in every generation, there is always a voice that God sends to open the eyes of understanding of every sincere seeker and lover of the truth of the gospel and refute the half-truth and deceptive lies of every religious tradition and practices that masquerade as counterfeit to the truth of the Christian faith. This is the hard truth of the gospel. We have been notified by the scriptures of the appointments everybody has with Christ. There is an appointment everybody has with Christ. To some is unto salvation. To some is unto destruction. Unto condemnation. But the love of God concerning us is that his coming will be unto our salvation. And this is why we are always gathering to remind ourselves of his ways and, our, and to put ourselves in remembrance of everything he has said and to make sure that we are believing what we are asked to believe. It is not for us to uh, work out our salvation. No. Your salvation cannot be worked out by you. Your salvation is a work ordained by God and perfected by God Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. The only thing that the saints are required for their salvation is for them to believe in the truth. And that is why Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 29. This is the work of God. For those of you that want to do the work of God, I want to do God's work. I want to do God's work. This is the work of God that you believe Him whom He has sent. That's all. When we didn't know this, some of us set out to go to the mountain and perhaps live there until Jesus comes. Some of us almost wanted to cohabit with wild animals in the bush. Some of us had very wide imaginations and dimensions of work that we need to do. But Jesus said, this is the work of God, believers, that you believe in him whom God has sent. And you know him whom God has sent. The work of God that he wants you to do for you to be entitled to the blessings of God in your life is that you believe him whom he has sent. Hallelujah. Amen. Every other thing uh, every other thing is a strangeness to what he wants. What he wants is that we believe and not just believe him. Because some people say they believe him. Believe him as what? Believe him as the truth. It is not their work that will set you free. The Bible says, Ye shall know the truth. It is the truth that will set you free. And Jesus is the personification of that truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he is the person of the truth. He is the truth made flesh. So you are believing in Jesus. It means you are believing in the truth. And you cannot believe, you can't say you believe in, in Jesus, but you don't believe in the truth. We have been working on a topic for the last two Sundays. Our two last messages have been on an exposition of the unknown Jesus. We have been receiving lessons from God on the topic, the Jesus whom the world does not know. This is part three of that message. The Jesus whom the world does not know. Our 
commission in this message is to make the unknown Jesus to be known to the world. That's our message. That is our objective. To make known the unknown Jesus. Apostle Paul in Acts of Apostle 17 preached with this in mind to make the unknown Jesus known to the people of the city of Athens. And more than two years or about two years after his departure the world has remained in the darkness of the ignorance of who Jesus is. So our topic today in our topic today we shall be answering the following questions. Is Jesus known or unknown to the world? What does the scripture say concerning this? What says the Bible, your scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, concerning this question? Is Jesus known by this world or is he unknown by this world? What does the scripture say concerning this? If the scripture says he is unknown, is he still unknown? Today, is Jesus still unknown today? Or has the world come to know him now? Has the world come to know him now? Is Jesus, I said, if the scripture says he's, he's unknown, is he still unknown today? Or has the world come to discover who he is? Has the world come to know him? If his brothers could not know him, if his brothers, the Jews, the Israelites, who were waiting for him 2,000 years ago, reading the scriptures to whom John the Baptist was sent to prepare for him, if they received John the Baptist with all that John the Baptist did, to make Jesus known. If his own brothers could not know him, could not identify him, could not recognize him without a light of revelation. Because those that recognize him, we are only able to recognize him by the light of revelation from God. And if the Jews could not know him, could not identify him, could not recognize him without a light of revelation from the Father. Do you think you can know him with your sincerity? If his brothers could not recognize him, could not identify him, could not know him with all that God did, with all their prophets, with all their priests and high priests, even with John the Baptist, and with all the teachers that were busy within the scriptures in that day, waiting for him patiently and eagerly. Do you think that we, the Gentiles, can know him with our sincerity, with our zeal, with our study of the scriptures, with our dedication? With our prayers, with our works, do you think that we can discover who he is with our sincerity, our zeal, our study, our dedication, our prayers, our work? These are questions. Is it possible that notwithstanding the fact that just as we have seen, all world religions and religious movements recognize Jesus and the fact that he exists. All world religions. Is it possible that notwithstanding that all world religions recognize that Jesus exists as we have seen through our Part one and part two of this message. 
We have seen all world religions. We started with we started with the witchcraft that that uh, the devil performed in the Garden of Eden. I told you here that one of the oldest religion in the world is not Buddhism, it's not Islam, it's not Christianity. The oldest Christianity started about two thousand years ago. Before Jesus Christ came, there was no Christianity. Two of us. Even while he was here on this earth, there was no Christianity. It was uh, at, at his death, upon his death. Hallelujah. Mm. The Christian faith was buried after the death. In fact, the death is the cross. And without the death of Jesus, there could not have been any Christianity. The Christian faith is unfounded without his death. There cannot be any Christianity without the death of Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that the, old, the oldest religion, one of the oldest, because when God created Adam, Adam worshipped God. So the worship of God, the true worship of God had existed before the serpent came. Before the devil personified himself in the person of the serpent and went in there to the see them. And what you saw in the Garden of Eden was nothing but witchcraft. And that is one of the oldest, the second oldest religion in the world is witchcraft. Demon disguising because I've had messages on witchcraft. And if you go through all our messages, one central thread on our messages on witchcraft is the devil disguise, a disguise of the devil. Either it's camouflaging in the form of a man, or a woman, or a tree, or a stone. Once mystical powers begins to manifest through any medium, other than Jesus, and that medium is a disguise of the devil, that is witchcraft. In the garden, he did what? The devil disguised himself. And let Adam and Eve. The devil is not a person. The devil, the Bible says, Lucifer is one of the angels. And the Bible says, angels are ministering spirits. They were created by the Lord Jesus. In Colossians 1, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says, Jesus is the creator, the creator of both the visible and the invisible. Do you see angels? But when they take human body, you can see a body and you say it's an angel. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That same way, angels appeared in the form of men to meet and speak to fellow men. They are not human beings. They are ministering spirits. But they can take up a body and appear and do a particular thing. The same way the devil, which is one of the angels, one of the ministering spirits, he can take up anybody. In the garden, he took up the serpent. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11 that in 11 verse 15, 14 and 15 that he is taking up who now? What? Is it serpent? No. He said he has transformed himself into an angel of light and is going to take up ministers, apostles. They are the people, teachers, workers in the church. 
is going to use them. And so there is witchcraft both in the church and outside the church. In the Garden of Eden, the devil was there. Through of us. You cannot see the devil for his spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot see the devil with your eyes. But you can see an object in which he has manifested. He can manifest in a child. He can come into a house and take off their maid. And he has been inside your maid for a purpose. He can inhabit a person for a purpose. That is why the Bible says we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto who? God. This is your body. Nature across vacuum. If Christ is not in, in that vacuum, in that, in that space, the devil will make use of it. It's automatic. There is no vacuum in nature. He doesn't need you to accept him. He's moving around. He was asked, What? Say, I have been moving around to and fro on the face of the earth. What happened in the garden of Eden was nothing but the birth of witchcraft. And according to Paul, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, identified it that he's also going to operate in the church. He operated in the church. He bewitched chief people inside the church. When he takes up an, a, a, an apostle, a teacher, an evangelist, a pastor, a prophet, an anointing against the word of truth, he is he has, he has operated in the garden of Eden. He did nothing but to use an ordinary animal. Some of you have heard that there are trees that you go, you cut it uh, uh, water, you drink it, it will heal you. Some of you have heard that there are some rocks that you go, some stones that you have, it will have some mystical powers. Some of you have heard about rivers, seas, lakes. With mystical powers. Some of you have heard about he can use anything. The same way God can appear anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. God spoke to Prophet Bala in the book of Numbers 22 through the mouth of who? A donkey. The man of what? A donkey. A donkey was riding. God opened his eyes. A donkey. He prophesied to. He spoke to a prophet. Say, oh man, oh man, oh man of God, or whatever. Oh prophet. Since I've been in your house, have I behaved this way? Look before you. An angel of God is right in front of us with a sword, seeking to slay you. That's why I've been slowing, slowing down. The prophet was busy beating the donkey. Why are you wasting my time here? Do you know who I am? Do you know the appointment I have with this? Do you know how much they have paid me? He has been paid to go and cost the people of Israel. And as he was galloping to the place on his donkey, God intercepted him. With a sword, you see, an angel waiting for him to, be, to slay him. He could not see him, so called prophet, but God opened the eyes of the donkey. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Kings, God told us, How can I cause? To be destroyed, and to bring to fulfillment the words of my prophet Elijah. And uh, you read there, you see how a spirit, what? A spirit. What? A spirit. Jumped up. The other one said, 
we can we can forget him. What he said was not meaningful to God. The Lord one said, I know. I will enter, I will go to his prophets, I will anoint their tongues, and they will prophesy a lie unto him. That is what? A spirit. A what? A spirit. Bam. That is witchcraft. When that prophet is prophesying, King Allah be seeing a prophet, two of us. Before King Allah, the what he seen is what? He's not seeing the spirit, is it? Is he seeing the devil? He see a prophet. He see a man of God. He see an apostle. He see anything you want to call him. That is what he see. But there is somebody who has taken you up, and that person is a spirit. Whatever name you want to call him, you are on your own. But I am saying, which crazy? When you see people say, uh, go there and do this, do this, do that. See, God can manifest in any form. When God healed blind body image, he said, go to the sea of what? Siloam. Amen? Amen? Go and wash yourself. And he washed. transmitted to that river. Amen? Amen? God can use any media. The same way, the devil can use what? That is a pastor that is wearing white and white. That is carrying the, the biggest Bible. Driving the costliest vehicle. Flying the most expensive jets. God can use him and destroy all of you. The only thing that God has left for you to, to withstand, to make it impossible, is to use the word of God to withstand it. Judge him by the word. By the word. The Bible told us that we have two spirits. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Is this so in your Bible? Yes. I said, is this so in your Bible? Yes. Two spirits. This thing you people say a spirit manifests. Before I was before I came here, I was hearing some people praying and say they asked one woman, sister, what are you doing? Sister, what are you you are laughing. Yes. Sister, we are the other time. See, this God for them, he goes up somewhere. When they want to do fellowship, ah, I put up here. I put up here, I put up here. Sister, I put up here. I put up Amen. I say amen. All right. Look at witchcraft. You know, people don't know what is witchcraft. Whenever these spirits want to perform, they don't have given us the spirit. Even in your dream, have you ever seen a spirit? He must use a body, two of us. Say, start, come and break. You can imagine the God that, that was brought down. Just use your, your sense now and begin to imagine that God. That is a star brought down with very powerful songs of praise and worship. And people were rolling on the ground. <laughs> I call that, I, 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 then after a while, the sister starts saying, Let come and hear, let come and see how I am a real and see him, and see him, he's in our list. Ah. <laughs> That is the, then everybody will know that uh, Monsu Abarata. We even used to sing it, you know. Monsu Abarata, we don't know. Monsu Abarata, we don't know. Monsu Abarata. 
<laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, where does this monster go? After <laughs> he leaves you and go where? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Witchcrafty. Apostle Paul said, Church, who has bewitched you? What did he see that is his recording of witchcraft? The Spirit of God has told him. The second oldest religion in the world is what? The moment God established the worship of his day on the, in the garden. The devil waited for him to finish. As soon as he left, the devil entered that garden by himself, but always disguised. Even the Antichrist, he has, he has, you are hoping to see. Who do you think he is? He's just going to be a human being, anointed fully with the power of what? The devil. And he will transform because what makes him an antichrist is not that he's going to be, don't see him as going as somebody who, he, who is fighting from outside Christian Christendom. No. What makes him an antichrist is that he will evolve himself inside the church and rise to the to with powers, Bible says he's coming with wonderful signs and what? <laughs> this second Thessalonians chapter two, if you he said he is coming. You have you see these signs you are seeing now. You have not seen anything. You will see people go to the grave and wake people up who have died for ten days. Your eyes will open. You will drop your you will drop everything you are doing and follow you. You have not seen anything. Wait, wait. The Bible will warn you ahead of time. He is coming with what? Signs and Powerful signs and wonders. Such that the world has never seen before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Not in the name of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus, but not on the truth, it is the witchcraft, it is witchcraft in oppression. It happened in the garden. He came in the form of a very subtle animal and deceived our parents. The Bible told you and me that it is oh, he's always he's, he entered the church the moment Jesus left. Immediately the church was born. He moved in. That is work. And Jesus told you a parable. The parable of the gardener. Who after planting the wheat. Three of us. He left. And the Bible said, Jesus told you that in the parable. He said, and an enemy went inside the same uh, garden. The same garden and planted what? Weeds. And these weeds look like what? You can hardly differentiate it. Counterfeits. They can be operating in the market for many years. It is only a, a mercury bulb in the back that can be able to detect it. But out there, it can purchase. So with it, you can have parts, miracles, healing. Deliverance, signs and wonders, prophecy of any type, but it cannot produce the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah! That counterfeit Jesus cannot produce the Holy Spirit of God. And without the Holy Spirit of God, you are an object meet for condemnation. You are, you are awaiting God's destruction. You are just chopping, growing your stomach, growing your bank account, waiting for God's wrath one day. 
either in this life, either alive, either it is when you are alive or after your death. Amen. Amen. So the oldest religion is the worship of God. Yes, that's in the Garden of Eden. But immediately after that, witchcraft came. And uh, those who don't know witchcraft have attributed it to what happens in the African woods in the village. Black magic. No. No. The devil is wiser than what you think. The devil, Lucifer, is a ministering spirit. He can mean he can take anybody. He can use any person. He can use any objects. Not just persons. Objects. Waters. Rivers. Some people tell you that they saw this, saw that in a river. Saw this, saw that. And that's why many people, some of these uh, charismatic uh, churches, these white government churches, you see their work always on rivers and, and objects. Using objects. This object they are using, all they know is that if you buy this thing, it, it has some mystical power. You don't know who gave that thing the mystical power. The mystical power there is from what? But the Bible tells you that there are two spirits. Spirit of truth and spirit of error. And as we are saying, we are posing our questions. We are saying, is it possible that notwithstanding the fact that just as we have seen, all of religions and religious movements Recognize Jesus and the fact that he existed or exists. And despite the fact that his name is on the lips of almost all flesh on the face of the earth, majority of whom claim to be worshipping him, majority of whom claim to be worshipping Jesus, up to today, Jesus Christ has remained a mystery to the world. Despite the fact that all religions, all religious movements, as we saw in our past teachings, recognize Jesus as either a teacher, a prophet, good man, of, good man, uh, man of God, whatever, but there is one common denominator of all religions in the world, including witchcraft. They recognize that there was a man called Jesus, good man, good teacher, good prophet, whatever. But check your Bible. Check, go and use your Google. Google all religion. There is not even one that does not recognize Jesus. Even the ones that came before Jesus came, like Buddhism. Uh, he do he busy. All of them still gave recognition to who Jesus. Islam came after. Islam still recognized him. Jehovah Witness. They say there is somebody called Jesus. Mormons. They say there is somebody called Jesus. The only difference is who they say he is. Great message. All of them, all religious organizations, all Christian denominations, the Orthodox, the Conservatives, the Evangelicals, the Charismatics, the Pentecostals, the End Timers, or the Apocalyptics, all of them. There is Jesus on their lips. They are calling on the name of Jesus. But as what? And this is the answer to these questions. We form the object of our study today. The answers to these questions will form the object and focus of our Bible study today.
We have in the past surveyed the universe of beliefs among all religious groups. The variants of beliefs. Judaism said, we, yes, we know that Jesus existed. He was here 2,000 years ago. He was just a great, a great teacher. A great prophet. But not a Messiah. So, from Judaism, the religion of the people of, of, the, of Israel, they, all of them, till, till the last Pentecostal church in the world today, there is a recognition of who Jesus is. Now, let us now resort to the scriptures and ask God to speak to us through the scriptures as to how we can know him as to the reasons for this gross misunderstanding of who Jesus is. One person being misunderstood by every religion, yet all of them recognize him. Every religion and religious organization, movement, Christian denomination, Christian association in the world, there is one common denominator. They all recognize who, that Jesus existed or that he exists. But one thing is obvious. What this person says is, is not this, what this person says is. So for us, as Christians, we are going to do today what Jesus did in the book of Matthew 16, when he took them to a far journey and at the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked them, these people that we left, who do they say I am? And after he has taken what is their view, what are their views about him, he now asked the people inside, the people with him. We have surveyed the universe of interpretations, meanings, definition, understanding, beliefs and conclusion of all religious groups about what Jesus is. Now, can we now go to the scripture to ask, is these things that people are saying that he is? We have seen that the denominations, for example, all Christian denominations, their belief is that Jesus is one of the Godhead. Is Jesus the Son of God? Jesus, that he is God, but he is just Son of God. But he is not the only person. They see him as one out of the three persons in the Godhead. True or false? Some that say, some that have come to the discovery that he, some say, oh yes, he is one God. He is one God. Jesus Christ of today is the, is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. He is the God, the Father, the God, the Son, the God, the Holy Spirit. But they also go to say, if you follow them carefully, they go to add that Jesus was anointed by Almighty God 2,000 years ago. And today in the world, there are people, maybe one in their midst, who has been anointed. Some regard Jesus as the anointed of God, a person anointed by God. And by this they say that he is not the only one that is anointed. Others can be anointed. Hallelujah. So, for some, Jesus is God the Son. Not the Almighty God. Not God the Father. For some, yes, he is God the Father and God the Almighty because he is anointed by God the Almighty. But he is not the only one anointed. He was anointed that time. And today, some people, somebody is now anointed. Hallelujah. So, they, they, and these people 
are the recent, most recent, most recent conclusions among the end timers. It's, a, it's one of the tendencies we are seeing among the end timers today. Where people believe that Jesus was an anoint, was anointed. That the meaning, the meaning that the meaning of Christ or the meaning of Messiah is that he's anointed, and that today another person can be anointed. But the Bible told us the Jesus we are talking about is Jesus Christ of yesterday, today, and forever. He will not be anointed yesterday, and, not, and today another person will be anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If he is, a, if he was anointed then, and the Hebrews three thirteen verse eight says, "Is Jesus Christ of today? I mean, yesterday, today, and forever." It means that Jesus Christ remains the same. What he was yesterday, what he is today, and what he shall be forever. Amen. So. All these are the interpretations, so we need to now resort to the scriptures. And the first thing we are going to, the first scripture we are going to look at is the book of John 16, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I, I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly. Of the Father, future, future. I have told you these things. This is the one of the, the the last minute messages of the Lord Jesus before He went to the cross. This is John sixteen. I have told you many things about the Father in Proverbs, in parables. A time is coming in future. When I shall speak to you plainly about who the Father is. This tells us that what is what the Father is is a mystery which is not meant for everybody. When Jesus was on the earth, he made sure he spoke. He knew, he knew the character of his audience. He knew he was talking to the whole world. And so he said, everything I'm saying now about the Father is in what? Parables, Proverbs. I will in the future tell you people in plain language who my Father is. In future. This is close to the time of his departure. What is that future? The Bible tells us that future is when the Holy Spirit comes. In John 16 verse 13, the Bible says, And when he, the Spirit of truth, shall come, he shall lead you into all truth. He will reveal to you all these things that we are saying in parables. Why? The Spirit of God will only be found in the church. Hallelujah! The Spirit of God is only found in where? The church. Not outside the church. When Jesus was here on this earth, he was speaking to the whole world. Hallelujah! But he said, a little while, the world will see me no more, but you see me, for I will live in you. Amen? So, at that time, he knew that his audience is not limited to his disciples or apostles. He concerned everything and said, everything I've been telling you about my father. Is it what? Proverbs. A time is coming in the future. I will tell you who my father is. That time is not that time, but the time of the of the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ. That Spirit that was in Christ. When he starts his operation, he is going to operate only within a believer. 
The Spirit of God cannot go to an unbeliever and tell you who Christ is. It is only to a believer. He said, when you believe, you shall be given what? Power. This Holy Spirit has this boundary. It cannot move outside a believer or the congregation of believers to reveal himself or to reveal the truth. We saw him in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost speaking and he led the church into discovery that the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. In John chapter 5 39 to 40 you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. Verse, verse 40. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. You search the scriptures. Some people have believed that we can by searching the Bible discover who Jesus is. And the Bible Jesus told them here. Have you not been searching the Bible all these years? You are searching the scroll, what the prophet said about me, what the psalmist said about me, what Moses wrote about me. You have, you have been reading all these things. You think in it you have eternal life. But unfortunately, you are yet unable to come to me. Look at verse 40. You have not, you cannot the reading of the Bible has not helped you to discover me. You cannot discover Jesus by reading of the scriptures. It is God that will reveal himself to you. There are people who are professors of this Bible. Two of us. Bible study or Bible knowledge has professors. Two of us. These professors are Believers, some are not believers, but they are professors in these scriptures. And the Bible says, if you are searching, he said, they search the scriptures, thinking that believing that in it is eternal life. But they are not yet able to come to me. In verse 43, Jesus said, I have come in my father's name. And you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Here, Jesus made it clear. He's speaking to, to, to the group that feels that they can, by going to seminary or going to Bible college, Bible or University of Theology, or becoming a, a, a holder of PhD or holding a professorship in that, you cannot know him by that. Hallelujah. John 17 John 17 verse 25 Jesus spoke saying O righteous father the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. Here, Jesus made a clear pronouncement. And uh, if you say that the world knows Jesus, or that you can know Jesus by uh, much study, going through the scriptures, reading it, studying it, going to seminary, going to Bible college, going to universities of theology and all that. The Bible said, the world, Jesus said, the world has not known you, God. Father, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. Is it true then? In the same John chapter 8, Verse 19, 
The Bible said, Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. You don't know me. You don't even know my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't know me, you don't know my father. These are clear statements Jesus is speaking about him. These are his brothers. They are, he's telling them, you, you neither know me, you don't even know my father. See something similar to that also in uh, in 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, and we sang it today in, our, in, the, in, the, in the worship. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. The world does not know us because they do not know God. This is a conclusion, a conclusive statement that the world does not know God. So if you have gone to any uh, religious university, or to any man to teach you about God, you are making a mistake. Apostle Paul knew and saw Peter, saw John, saw James, the leaders of the church. When he was called, if this message is to be taught to people by if this, if this revelation can be given to people by fellow human being, he would have been asked to go and meet uh, Peter or James or John. But he said in Galatia chapter 1, verse 11, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man or man's wisdom for I neither received it from man nor was I taught it but I came but it came through revelation of Jesus Christ amen I, I didn't go to any man I didn't go to anybody to teach me it came to me by revelation, God revealed Himself. Of course, you will read it. You will be reading. You have to read the scriptures. Of course, we are supposed to be reading. We are obliged. We are required to read the scriptures. But it is the knowledge of God is not by reading the scriptures. It takes God. See, when you read it, you will surely have an understanding. But that understanding you are having. When revelation from God has not come, is your own human understanding or the understanding of the man who is teaching you. But God, when God opens your eyes, He's going to tell you the meaning of these words. Hallelujah. I didn't go to any man. I didn't receive this message from any man. The Lord Jesus that called me is the one that revealed this message. I'm aware there was there is Peter. Peter is there in Jerusalem. James is there. John is there. Andrew is there. Philip is there. I did not go to any of them. He that called me, he revealed these things unto me. So, what is the reason for this gross access of the knowledge of God? You will also see that statement of the world not knowing him in John chapter 1 John chapter 1 10 and 11 he was in the world the world was made through him 
and the world did not know him. He came even to his own, and his own did not receive him. He was in the world, a world which he made by himself. The world could not recognize, could not recognize him. The world did not know him. He even came to his own brothers, and they, they could not recognize him. In John, the same first, in same John chapter one, we look at four and five. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In Jesus was the was the light. This light is the light of the world. This light was in the world, shining in the darkness of the world, but the world did not comprehend him. Is the world was the, is the world truly really darkness? Let us see Isaiah chapter sixty. For behold, the dark, dark the darkness shall cover the earth, and the, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. It will cover not just the earth, but even the world. Deep darkness on the world, on the people. A prophet is telling the world, God has sentenced the world to spiritual darkness. He said, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness shall cover the people. So not just the earth, but even the inhabitants of the earth, the Bible ordained darkness to cover everywhere. Hallelujah. In this darkness is what Jesus told us. That it is said in John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life. And the light was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness. This is that darkness that God has ordained. God has sentenced the world. The world is in darkness, not just the world. Even the people in the world, in the world, are what in darkness. And a light was brought by God Himself. He says, in him was light, the light was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend him. In that same John, he said, verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world did not know him. In John chapter 3, verse 19, this is the condemnation. He said, this is, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds they are evil. This is judgment. Who is the one that placed the world in darkness? God. Who is the one that placed the world, that placed darkness on the people? God. And this God now came with light. This God now came as light and says, I have come, I am the life and the light of the world. Without me, you cannot see. He gave the example with a blind man, blind Bartimaeus, who was blind and was made to know God. Why those who have eyes and were seen was made not to recognize God. Hallelujah. Of the apostles 13 verse 27 for those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers because they did not know him nor even the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath have fulfilled them in condemning him for those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers because they do not know him those that killed Jesus killed him because they do not know him if they had known that he is the almighty God, 
the Amaziah whom they were waiting for. They will surely not have killed him. Hallelujah. They killed him because they did not know him. They killed him believing that he is not, he's an impostor, he's an impersonator, he's claiming to be God, he's claiming to be our Messiah. He is not our Messiah because their eyes were closed. They don't know him. The Bible said it correctly. The world does not know Jesus and the world does not know his father. John chapter 1 verse 31 I did not know him says John the Baptist but that he should be revealed to Israel therefore I came baptizing with water John the Baptist said I don't know him even, the, even my people Israel do not know him but I was set for this purpose that I may reveal that I may that he should be revealed to me he was revealed to John and then John told the Jews this is the Lamb of God hallelujah John said nobody knew him even me I did not know him but for God to reveal him to me you see, even John the Baptist says, I came to know him by what? Revelation. For God to reveal him to Israel, God asked me, sent me to be baptized in the river Judah. He gave only me a sign. That sign he saw of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus Christ after his baptism. I mean, before his baptism, was not a sign known to everybody. Three of us. Only John the Baptist saw that sign. Only John the Baptist knew it. It is for him that that sign was given. And he now told the world, This is the Lamb of God. By revelation. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. This is how God wants to deliver you and me from that darkness he the world is in darkness and he has sent light to the world he has come as the light of the world and the world does not recognize him and this is how he delivers delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son jesus christ colossians 1 verse 13 he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and uh, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Now, you can see that there are two groups. The one group does not know him. The world does not know him. But there is a group with him that knows him. And he wanted to make this difference in Matthew chapter 16 verse 16. He took them on a journey. And when they had left Jerusalem, they were at the coast of Sidera Philippi. He asked them, who do they say? He wanted them to stay away from Jerusalem. To stay away from the people of Jerusalem. The people of Israel. The people to whom he came, the people who claimed to be his own, he now asked them, you are now here. These other people are there. These people, the Jews, our brothers, our, belly, our brethren, who do they say that I am? It was important for this message that Jesus would have to leave Jerusalem. You have to leave the land of Israel and move a little. He will need to leave Jerusalem and move that capital, that headquarter of worship. The woman of Samaria said, You worship in Jerusalem. Jesus purposefully left Jerusalem to make a distinction between them and you. Then, what do they say I am? And they gave a, a category. Some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Jeremiah. 
Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are one of the prophets. Good. That is what they say. It is not even odd. Some of them people say he is a, a, a great teacher. Now, he now turned to them. Can you now see the reason why he left Jerusalem? He needed to show a distinction between the, his own group the people with him, the people to whom God has revealed who Jesus is. It was important for this message that Jesus will have to leave Jerusalem. For us to have a clear distinction between what others are saying Jesus is and what those who are inside are saying he is. We have heard what they say he is. Now he has turned to his own people, the people inside. Remember what he said in Mark chapter 4, 10 and 11. He said, I speak in parables so that those who are outside, they will read as parables. But to you who are within, you have it, you have the true understanding of the world. Is that clear? Yes. Let's see it. Mark chapter 4, verse 11. He said to them, maybe I start from verse 10 to 11. But when he was alone, those around him with it, those around him with the twelve asked him about the, about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in what? Amen. This is the same parable he talked about in John 16, verse 25, saying, I speak, I have been telling you about the Father in parables. I shall tell you plainly. The world will take these parables I've given you. They were around you and me when I was telling you these things. I spoke to you in parables because we are mixed up. People are around us. People are everywhere around me. Swarming, looking for miracles, looking for one favor or the other. So, I have been speaking to him parables about the Father. I shall in the future tell you about him plainly. Here, you have seen that it is very clearly made, made, made known to us that there is a distinction between what those within say he is and what those outside. He took them away from Jerusalem so that they can be able to make a distinction between those in Jerusalem. The religious war represented by Jerusalem and the apostles to whom God has revealed the truth. Who do you say I am? Peter speaking for those within the inner circle said, You are Christ! The son of the living God said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this, but my father in heaven. So it is, it should be noted that Jesus immediately pointed out Peter did not come to know this by reading the scriptures. Peter did not know this by his ability to always follow me. He didn't know this by always following me. He knew this by revelation by my father, fulfilling. Matthew 11 verse 27 No one knoweth the Father except the Son And no one knoweth the Son except the Father And to whomsoever He will reveal it No one knoweth the Father Except the Son And no one knoweth the, the Son Except the Father And to whomsoever The Father will reveal it so it's important that here Jesus confirmed. He told Peter, he didn't know this thing by much reading, by much following, fellowship. You knew it by the revelation by God Himself. Now, with this clear distinction, now Jesus has made a distinction for us. The religious world represented by Jerusalem. They are they, repre they represent today what all other Christian denominations 
all religious bodies in the world, what they say Jesus is. We have seen what the witches say he is. We have seen what the Ekaka, great message, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Islam, what they all say he is. All of them. And we have seen they all recognize him either as a teacher, a great moralist, a great prophet, a great man of God, a, everything great yet, but not the Almighty God. And some among religious denominations see him as God, but one of the gods, one of the persons, one of the persons in one God. That is if God were to be a person. But God says, I am not a person. I am a spirit. And them that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Your God is not a person. But he manifested in a person. Now we have seen all these things. We now come to the apostles. There is something that God wants to show us today in the scriptures. Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. For if he who come, comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. I'll stop there. If he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. I will even shut it again to another Jesus whom another Jesus one whom we have not preached to. Amen. Another Jesus whom we have not preached. Look at it closely. And may God reveal to you what is inside that this words. Another Jesus. Here, the Spirit of God is letting us to know that there is another Jesus. Different from the Jesus whom the apostles preached. He didn't say whom I have not preached. He said, whom we, this we are who? The apostles. Hallelujah. So, there is a Jesus the apostles preached and there is another Jesus which the world is following today. I have now narrowed myself to where I'm going. There is a Jesus, you see, I came down to this point from Matthew 16 verse 16. There, he took them from Jerusalem away. They were away from Jerusalem. Away from the religious world. The headquarters of religion in the world. And he told them, these people in the headquarters, who do they say I am? I mean those who are priests. High priests. Kephas, the high priest. Nicodemus, the great teacher. I came out here for me to make a distinction between you and them. Now tell me, who do they say I am? They could not come to the recognition of who Jesus is. Now, you yourself, don't forget, Mark 4 verse 11 says, I speak to you in parable so that to, to those who are outside, they will receive it as what? Parables. But you who are within, God will reveal the word. The meaning. Hallelujah. It is meant for you to know the meaning, the truth. You are ordained to know the truth, but not them. And to test, to test these things, to test this message, to test what Jesus is saying here, he took them out. Let's be going. Going where? When they went there, did they buy anything? Did they do anything? Eh? Nothing. They finished that thing and he said, when you go there, don't tell them. Hallelujah! Amen. Don't let them know that I'm the desire. It's not for their consumption. Allow them to see hope their belief that I'm a, a prophet, that I'm Jeremiah, that I'm Elijah, that I'm one of the prophets. Why would Jesus tell Peter not to tell them? Hallelujah. There is a distinction 
between those who are with Jesus and those who are not with Jesus. To those who are with Jesus, it is meant for them to, is, they are meant to, it, the truth is meant to be revealed unto them. But those who are not with Jesus, they will read it as what? Parables. Jesus said. They will cram it. They will quote it. They will, they will not theorize. They will obtain professorship in it. But they don't know the meaning. If they come to know Jesus by reading this thing, then Jesus has been proved to be a liar. Through of us. He said he cannot know me. Except my father tell you whom I am. He cannot know me. And to people that we are reading the Bible, we say, you are searching the Bible because you think you are in them. You have eternal life. But up to now, you have refused to come to me. But if we are enter the I can see all of you searching the what? Searching the what? Some even carry it asleep. Some put it under their pillow. Some put it on top of their dashboard. Anytime some are carrying it as their course, anytime you make money, they will just lift it and say, I'm warning you. Some are carrying it as their sword. In the main bottle, you will really buy that now. You will just get by. Bam. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. But the truth, there, are you not reading it? You are reading it every day. But you have refused to come to me. You are reading John 5 verse 39. You are busy reading the scriptures. Because you say, that is where eternal life. This is what will tell. This is the thing that testify about me. This Bible is talking about who? About who? Jesus. But it is impossible. For you to go to God or come to God by, by much reading. No way. If it were possible, many professors would have gotten it. This thing is locked. Locked by who? Jesus. By God. In Luke 24, verse 16, he was walking with disciples to Emmaus. And the Bible said, he locked, he locked their understanding. Lock it! Though they will not know him. Lock royal and was discussing with them. with them. Discussing with them. Discussing with them. Until at a point, the Bible said in their home, he broke bread and opened their eyes of understanding. And they came to discover that it was him. And he did what? He vanished. Who is he that can lock your understanding? The same way you lock your television, you will just lock it. He will come, you will not know him. You will touch him, you will stay with him. He will buy something, you will meet him in the river. He will tell you to give him water. You will tell him, Who are you, Seth? Who are you? Why are you asking me to give me water? Don't you know that people from Samaria don't have anything to do with people from uh, uh, Jerusalem, Israel? He has seen me give you water. As if you don't know. He laughed. You see, he can come to a man and lock your understanding. That is what he told you that he has put the whole world in what? Darkness. It is God that has set it up that way and then came to the world as what? Light. He said, the only way you can walk out of this darkness is, to, is, to, is, to, is, is through what? Me. See, all our professors, as far as this Bible is concerned, they are all in, dark, in darkness. Every amount of inquiry into the scriptures, mountains, people you regard as infallible, what they have said cannot be tampered with. What they have said cannot be questioned. If God spoke to them, how can God speak to, to this, this God? And God has not spoken to, to this man. This man who has titles that 
resonate with God. Titus that that invokes God and His holiness. Some human beings have different, put arrogantly to themselves different kinds of titles and offices. So as to impress it on you that what they are saying is authoritative and final. Unquestionable. Good. Look at the man that answered a fisherman, no education, and he told him, Flesh and blood did not tell you this, but my father in heaven. I am sure. Peter, you didn't know this thing by following me or by much, by it is my father in heaven that told you this thing. And this is the secret. Keep it to yourself. Allow them to continue to wallow in this their belief that I am just a prophet. A, 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 a Islam say he is a prophet, not just a prophet, but a great prophet. But he did not die. We are coming to that now. You will see the Jesus the apostles preached. I will present to you today the Jesus who the apostles preached, and you will see the Jesus the world has been following. And the Bible told you this difference. In 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4, he says, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, I say underline another Jesus in your Bible. So, there is another Jesus. Another from which one? This one is another. It's different from what? Look at the next thing. Say, another Jesus. Who we? Who are these we? The apostles. Whom we have not preached. Hey, that's why they told you in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Anyone that comes after us and preaches any Jesus, any message, any gospel. Not exactly that one we brought. <laughs> he said, you, have, you don't enter that book. One chance. Watch their message. Watch it different from our message. Stop there. He said, whosoever comment after us. Whether it's an angel, can read that place. Galatians 1, 8 and 9. Whether he calls himself an angel, an apostle, bishop, pope, priest, pastor, anything he calls himself. Hold on. If he preaches anything different from that message we gave you, know that the devil is speaking to you. He said, let him be eternally condemned. He didn't stop there. He said, Brethren, as we say, we repeat. If any man comes and preaches another, another Jesus, different from the one we, we, the apostles. Today, God will open your eyes to discover that the Jesus the apostles preached is different from the Jesus the world is believing on there. This man that is saying we, did he go to leave Peter? Did he go to leave Peter to give to hear to, to receive the message? No way. He didn't go to meet John. Did he go to meet James? Philip? Andrew? No. He that called them is he that called him. Reveal the same message. In Galatians chapter 2, at a point, Apostle Paul now went back to Jerusalem to meet with them to know whether this message is preaching. Is what they are still holding. Is what they are preaching. To test himself, he subjected his message to a test. If God is the one speaking to me, then he must speak in accordance with what they are. What they are preaching. He went to Jerusalem, presented his message, 
and the apostles gave him a hand, a hand of fellowship and said, this is exactly what we are preaching. The same message. Can deeper life take their own to shallow life today? And can shallow life take their own to deeper life? Can those on the mountain of fire come down to the valley to check whether it is the same? Those at the valley have, can they go up to the mountain to subject their, their own purpose? Hallelujah! A man of God carried his message to the apostles saying, if this message is true, that must be the one. Apostle Peter, James, John, Jude, Philip, Andrew, that was the one they are preaching. Otherwise, it's not, it's not, it's not. he went there and God confirmed the message. Today, he concludes, you are a Christian because you are saying in Jesus' name. And you conclude, whoever comes to you and says in Jesus' name is a Christian. That is the deceit of the devil. Another Jesus who we have not preached. So, there is a Jesus who they preached. So, your duty today is to ask yourself, which Jesus is that Jesus who they preached? And why? what is different from the Jesus they preached and the Jesus we are with, that we are hearing today? The devil is not happy with me. I am being used by God to expose things that have been hidden for ages. I have been wandering for years, but it, uh, uh, of all my wandering, I gathered nothing. And when I cease from wandering, God showed himself to me. By revelation. Look at it here. Two different, another Jesus. It can have different variations, different variants. But there is one that is authoritative. That there is one that can produce the Holy Spirit in you. There is one that is the true Jesus. There is one that is the Jesus that cannot fail. See, the other Jesus can produce miracles. You see all the signs of the Holy Spirit, all the signs and wonders that you see in the church, it can produce them. That another Jesus can give the fruit of the womb. He can make the blind to see. He can bring healing to those who are sick. He can cause the leg to walk. He can bring deliverance to those in bondage. To those who are possessed. He can bring healing. He can perform different signs and wonders. But there is one thing he cannot do. In your life, he cannot produce Christ in you. He cannot produce the Spirit of God in you. But he will brandish these gifts. You see, gifts, gift of praying and uh, healing and uh, deliverance, gift of uh, any any mm -hmm. a gift is unlimited. Don't limit him. If you are limiting him, you don't know, you don't know him. I know him. And I know he can produce any kind of gift you need. He can give, he can bring power. He can bring security. He can give you protection. He can take you through the uh, uh, camp of assassins. And they will not kill you. He can make you, they will shoot at you. And you will not die. He can do all those things, brethren. Church, believers in the Lord Jesus, the devil can do all these things. In the name of who? Not in his name. He said, I know that I, you search the scriptures and you testify about it, but you cannot know me through it. I know that 
will come in my name and you follow him. So many Jesus has come up in history. The Jews believed and preferred Jesus Barabbas. So many Jews, so many Jesus in history. But the Jesus of the scriptures is Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So I now do tell the Jesus whom the apostles preached. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. John told you, I baptize you with water. But he, he that is coming, he is going to baptize people with what? This Holy Spirit that Jesus baptizes people with. Could it be a different one from the, the men, the men Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen. That is the Holy Spirit that we're hearing about. It's not another person. It is the Spirit of the Most High God. At times, is represented as a person. But it's not a person. The truth of the scriptures is that he's not a person. He, he, he can be represented as he. But it's not a person. It is the Spirit of the Most High God. That is the same Spirit that came down and gave birth to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is the Spirit that came down in Luke chapter 1 verse 35. And Mary became pregnant. That is the same spirit that Jesus called my father, my father. That is the spirit that gave birth to Jesus Christ. That is the spirit that made Mary to be conceived. Not another person. Mary said, how can it be possible? See that I'm a virgin. He said, when the spirit of God comes down, this thing you say is impossible with people what? Possible. When he comes down on you, you will be enveloped by him and you will be empowered. You will be overshadowed by the power of the most high God. And a, a, an offspring will come forth out of you. Hallelujah. That is the same Holy Spirit. That Jesus baptizes people with. That's the same Holy Spirit. He is the one that baptizes you with Holy Spirit. He is even the one that says it. If he's another, another, another God or another person, will he be sent by Jesus? Will Jesus, another person in God, in the Godhead, be sent another one? This God that Jesus was sent by himself. How can you call him <laughs> another God? Another person? That means he's not a problem with Jesus now. Because the Bible told you, John 15 verse 26, whom I will send, hallelujah, whom I will send. In John 14 verse 26, he said, his, his, the father will send. In John 15, he said, I, I need mean the same. I am the one that will save him. And he sent him. And he came. And he baptized us. John the Baptist told you, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the baptism of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, I baptize you with water. But the man I'm talking about, he will baptize you with what? Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, the Jesus the apostles preached and the Jesus the world is preaching. The world, I mean, both religious organizations, Christian denominations, all of them. They may not be the same, they may not agree, but one thing, they deny the almighty sheep, almighty Almightiness of God, of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. They deny the fatherhood of the Lord Jesus. They deny that, they deny the mystery of God, that Almighty God manifested in the person. Not, it doesn't make him another God. Hallelujah. When that God left Jesus, Jesus died. Hallelujah. Will you say, that 
the thing that die is God. Eh? No. Can God die? No. He manifested. He entered into a man. He made that man the Almighty God. Yes, he was telling you, my father, my father. Do you know where he is? Do you know where his father is? When you ask him, show us his your father. Take us to your home. Take us to his house. He told you, he who has seen me, has seen the head. The Holy Ghost told you where the father is dwelling. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. He said that the fullness of God, the totality of God, is indwelling in the who? In Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining us in today's edition of the Hard Truth of the Gospel. It is hoped that you will take advantage of this momentous encounter with the truth of the gospel to make an informed decision today that we avail you of the saving grace of the truth of the gospel or reject it and face the dire consequence of the rejection of the gospel truth. The choice is yours and the die is cast. Join us next Sunday for another edition of Heart Truth of the Gospel, same time. Until then, remain blessed.